Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about a new model of clotting, which is called a cell-based model of clotting. Most of you might be familiar with the older model of coagulation cascade, which involves an extrinsic pathway, intrinsic pathway, and a final common pathway, which leads to the fibrin mesh formation. This original pathway was actually uh, developed in the 1960s. The problem is that it could not explain all the phenomena which we have seen in the past 50 years. So this cell based model was proposed to explain all the include all the latest developments and whatever we learned from the clinical experience. And this 1960 model is mainly based on in vitro experiments and in vitro clotting mechanisms like how a blood clots in a test tube and other things. Whereas the cell based model is more physiological in the sense it ha describes how the clotting happens in a inside body in a real human being. So that's why this cell based model is more favored and all the latest pharmaceutical developments, the new drug development all depending on this cell based model. The cell based model has three steps. Like it has initiation, number two is amplification, the third is propagation. Initiation involves formation of a small amount of thrombin, which is called as thrombin spark. Amplification involves a positive feedback where the amount of thrombin developed is going to be amplified to a very high amount. Uh, we call it thrombin flame. This huge amount of thrombin will help the third stage that is formation of fibrin mesh work which will seal the blood flow. Let's clear everything. This is the uh, capillary and this is the endothelium of the capillary wall and this is the platelets which are resting and they are in the circulation and these are the subendothelial um, extracellular matrix and the subendothelial cells like fibroblasts and smooth muscles this uh, protein which is expressed in the smooth muscles and the fibroblasts is a tissue factor it's also called as factor 3 in roman numerals but i have just written as 3 for easy understanding this intact epithelium actually prevents the contents of the blood from coming into contact with this either the tissue factor or the extracellular matrix they usually don't come into contact with these things but whenever there is a endothelial injury damage now the content in the blood the blood factors are going to come into contact with this tissue factor and the platelet it's also going to expose to this collagen this platelets has receptors for binding to collagen when it binds to collagen it gets activated and it recruits other platelets and finally it forms a platelet plug this is called as the primary hemostasis primary hemostasis but today we are going to see the phenomena which is called a secondary hemostasis that is involving the coagulation factors and which forms the fibrin mesh the first one is just the formation of platelet plug but actually the first step releases certain um, coagulation factors which will be helpful for the secondary hemostasis also so now for discussing the secondary hemostasis we will just zoom into this particular area and then see what's going to happen this is the first step in the cell based model uh, this is the smooth muscle cell which is having a, a tissue factor 3 on its surface and uh, this is the activated platelet now let's add all the other clotting factors which is essential for this step that is initiation so this is factor 7 this is factor 10 factor 9 and this is prothrombin usually these factors are written in uh, roman numerals but i have given different colors and icons to just for easy memory and red color ones are the inactive stage like this prothrombin is red here and when it become an active molecule it becomes a uh, green color in the following animation so this tissue factor is first molecule which is going to bind to it is factor number seven this factor number seven exists in the circulation mainly in the inactive form 99.5 percentage is in inactive stage 0.5 is the only active proportion of this molecule but uh, this 0.5 percentage is very essential for the first step to form an active tenase complex this is called as a 10 A's, 10 A's, that is it is going to activate the factor 10 
more specifically this is called as a extrinsic tinnitus of course there is an intrinsic tinnitus also which is coming in the next stage so this factor 10 comes and binds to this tinnitus complex and gets activated not only this factor 10 this extrinsic tinnitus also activates factor number 9 which actually dissociates out and goes to the next steps this factor 10 which is very essential for formation of the prothrombinase complex prothrombinase complex this is going this prothrombinase as the name suggests it's going to convert this prothrombin into active thrombin molecule but it also requires additional factors such as uh, the calcium and the phospholipids from the surface of the cells it also requires the important cofactor factor 5 this activator 5a is going to be released by these platelets which are already activated and this 5a is going to now amplify the reaction rate so this 10 now the thrombin is going to come and bind it and get activated this activated platelets are going to release this 5a which is activated a form of 5 which is a cofactor for this prothraminase complex now this process this complex is going to produce more and more thrombin actually it's not a lot of thrombin this is only called as a thrombin spark because only small amount sufficient to initiate the reaction the second stage which we are going to see which will be essential for the amplification process let's go to the second stage the second stage is called as the amplification um, here this is the platelet which is in the circulation which is yet to be activated the platelet is activated by the thrombin which is actually released from the earlier stage this thrombin activates the platelet which actually going to release this activated 5a which is going to change in shape which is going to release all the alpha granules and dense granules there are a lot of changes going to happen when the platelet gets activated but let's just focus now with the coagulation factors only now thrombin uh, and this is thrombin and we also know this 9 factor 9 also came already from the uh, previous initiation stage itself but also thrombin can activate factor number 11 which can indirectly activate factor number 9 so now more and more factor 9 is also formed now the factor number 8 is bind to one willebrand factor factor 8 is written like usually like this which is bound to one willebrand factor in the circulation which is an inactive form now the thrombin is going to make it into active form and it's going to bind to this 9 so together 8 and 9 is going to form the another tinnase this is going to be this intrinsic tinnase so in the second step if you might have noticed both 9 and 8 comes from the fung activation of thrombin and once it is activated it's going to form more amount of activated molecule 10 when the 10 is activated again it requires a cofactor 5a which comes from the platelet which is again stimulated by thrombin which is released from the platelets going to bind to it so now this is an active prothrombinase complex this is going to convert more and more prothrombin into thrombin now this is the positive feedback which usually people uh, discuss coagulation cascade as an example for positive feedback so this is what they are actually referring that is initial change is the formation of small amount of thrombin and the homeostatic mechanism would create more and more amount of thrombin by this positive amplification so now this more large amount of thrombin formed by this process is going to take our um, cell based model into the third step that is propagation this is the active thrombin molecule this is going to convert factor number two uh, sorry the factor number two is thrombin factor number one to factor number one a this is thrombin is the factor two so fibrinogen is converted into fibrin monomers in presence of factor number four which is actually calcium this fibrin monomers are going to become fibrin polymers and this fibrin polymers are going to form cross-linking by the presence of factor number 13 which is again activated by thrombin 
no one in presence of factor 13 lot of cross link this is only a polymer here and this is going to form lot of cross linking between the polymers so a strong fibrin mesh work is formed so these are the three stages of cell based model now i have also uh, given a summary over here in a word format and and i also added all the coagulation factor list in the further slides so let's just look at the summary over here um, this is the initiation which is going to form the extrinsic DNAs. this is combination of factor 3 and factor 7a so 3 plus 7 forms the first DNAs, extrinsic DNAs. And the, once the 10 is formed by this particular molecule and the 5A comes from the platelets, this is going to form the prothrominase and initial thrombin spark happens. Apart from that, factor 9A is also going to be produced. Uh, this factor 9A is going to go to the next stage, uh, of course, along with the thrombin. The thrombin cleaves the one more molecule, which is essential for formation of the intrinsic TNAs, that is factor 8 from the von Willebrand complex. Factor 8 and 9 which is already formed from here or it can also be formed from thrombin indirectly through factor 11. This is the intrinsic TNAs which is going to form now more and more of uh, factor 10 activated molecule. Factor 5A and the phospholipids, calcium, everything come from uh, the exocytosis of the platelets. And together this prothrombinase complex is going to form more and more thrombin this is going to be thrombin burst or thrombin flame this is going to activate the propagation where fibrinogen is going to convert into fibrin it's polymerized by factor 4 and it is stabilized by factor 13 which is again thrombin is required for this purpose so just go through this list of coagulation factors and just to note this factor 6 is not here nothing is assigned over here because initially when they found it it was factor 5a they misidentified as factor 6 so when they came to know they just removed this factor 6 and this list is based on the sequence of how they identify all these things so just for completion i have added this uh, the older pathway also which is a contact activation pathway and tissue factor intrinsic and extrinsic pathways and this is the original coagulation cascade uh, those many of the steps are uh, uh, true individual steps but the, how the here the in the older step it comes as a two independent steps intrinsic and extrinsic as but we have what we have seen the intrinsic TNAs is actually uh, formed by the action of the extrinsic TNAs so these are all sequential and interrelated in the newer pathway which is actually more physiological so uh, the few other differences are one of the thing is that we have not at all discussed this factor 12 in our newer pathway just because uh, we don't know how, what is the physiological importance it plays though it can activate factor 11 which will activate factor 9 which is a part of TNAs we have not discussed this because today we don't know the important what's the importance um, we don't know if you like the video please uh, like comment and share please subscribe if you have any difficult concepts if you want to understand please leave it in the comment i'll make more videos on this thank you